Welcome to Corporate Finance. Welcome to Chapter 6, Homework Problems, Solution Videos, Ross Westerfield and Jordan, 13th edition, Fundamentals of Corporate Finance. We're going to look in Chapter 6 at discrete incremental cash flows, and they can be the same each month or each year. They can be different each month or each year. And so, therefore, we'll have to ask two very important questions as we do each problem from Chapter 6 going forward. Always ask, do we have an annuity? Same amount each month, same amount each year. And then if yes, you can use the Chapter 6 formulas. If not, if we do not have an annuity, we need to go back to Chapter 5 and discount or compound using future value, present value equation. So ask yourself, do we have an annuity? And then second question, are we discounting or compounding? Discounting means bringing it back to today, or are we compounding the cash flow out into the future? So we'll ask those two questions on every problem and then determine if we can use chapter six formulas to help us solve the problems. If not, we'll head on back to chapter number five. So starting with problem number one, Mendez Company Investment Project has following cash flows, 470, 610, 735, and in year 4920. Find the present value of these cash flows at 10% discount rate, 18%, and 24%. Question number one, do we have an annuity? No, these cash flows are all different. So we must go back to chapter five and do each cash flow separately. We cannot use chapter six formulas. So we're going to use present value equals future value over one plus R to the T. Um, and first, we're going to do it at 10%. We're going to discount these back at 10%. So um, we ask ourselves, uh, how far away from today are we? So with year one cash flow, we're one year away. So I would take 470 divided by 1.1 to the first, and then 610 divided by 1.1 squared. And then 735 divided by 1.1 cubed, and 920 divided by 1.1 to the fourth. And I get a total answer of 211.99. That should be your answer for problem number one. I do the same exact thing this time, but at 18%. So I should see a lower number, and I do 1758.27. And when I discount it at this very high 24%, I see that my total cash flows are way reduced to 1550.39. In a world with no discounting, my cash flows would be worth 2735, where there's no discounting, where there's heavy discounting, like in case 24%, it's only worth 1550.39. And there are your answers to problem number one. Problem number two, an investment X pays 5300 a year for eight years. Investment Y pays 7300 a year for five years. Which of these two investments are better for the company uh, at 5% and at 15%. So the question number one is, again, do I have an annuity? 5,300, 5,300, 5,300, 5,300, 5,300 for eight years. Yes, I do. Same as investment Y, 7,300, 7,300, 7,300, 7,300, 7,300 for the five years. Same amount each year. Now, question number two, am I discounting back to today or am I compounding out to the future? And the question tells me the answer to that. It says, what is the present value of these cash flows at 5%. So since I do have an annuity, the formula I will use is present value annuity. PV annuity equals C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R to the T, all of that over R. Plug in the numbers. Let's, let's just do the first one. Present value for project X is 5,300 times quantity 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 0.05 to the eighth, divided all that divided by 0.05. And that's the PV annuity formula, and I get 34,255.03, doing the same thing with the $7,300. So in this case, I just plug in 7,300 for C, and I get 31,605.18. Um, and then I do the same thing at 15%. In this case, I plug in 0.15 for the discount rate. And I do that for the $5,300 case for X and $7,300 case for Y. And I come up with $23,782.80 for present value of the $5,300 annuity, the 15%, and the present value of investment Y, $7,300 
per year, discounted back at 15%, I get 24,470. So in this case, at the 5% case, I'm going to take investment X, it's higher. And then at the 15% case, I'm going to select investment Y, 24,470, because that's the higher present value. So in this case, in problem two, I did have an annuity and I can just use the uh, present value annuity formula and discount those cash flows back to today. Let's look at problem number three. Christy Inc. has investment project with the following cash flows, 1075, 1210, 1340, 1420. And I want to know what is the future value in year four, all the way out in year four at 6%, 13%, and 27%. So again, I ask myself the two key questions. Do I have an annuity? Answer, no. These four cash flows are all different. So I must go back to chapter five. And then second question, am I discounting back to today, present value, or am I compounding out into the future, future value? Again, I'm going to have to use chapter five equation, not chapter six, because I do not have an annuity here. <laughs> and so clearly tells me I want future value in year four. So equation is future value equals present value times one plus R to the T. And let's do one row, one column of these. Let's do the 6% case. So I want to know what those four cash flows are worth compounded out to year four at 6%. So I take 1075 times 1.06 in, in the year one case to the third power. You can draw yourself a timeline and you'll see that the uh, year one cash flow comes in at the end of year one and it's three years away from the end of year four. So I'll take one, 1075 times 1.06 to the third power. And then I will take 1210 times 1 1.06 to the second power because the second cash flow is two years away from year four. Then I'll take 1340 times 1 1.06 to the first power because it's one year away from year four. And then I'll take 1420 times 1 1.06 to the zeroth power or multiplying by one because it's zero years away from the end of year four. Add those all up and I get a future value at 6% of 54.80.30. Do the exact same thing, except plug in 0.13 for 13% case, and I get a future value of $6,030.36. And for 27%, my money grows very rapidly, very exponentially, 72.75 and 42 cents. And there are your answers to problems one, two, and three.